is it possible that technology can solve all our environmental issues like climate change and food and water shortages or even ocean acidification? I think we'll need more than technology to get ourselves out of the problems. I think the technologies that we need for many things already exist and what we're lacking is political will. And that's going to come from the top, but it's also going to come from the bottom. I think we'll need um, a groundswell of people working together to push our policymakers and our decision leaders uh, into taking action to solve our environmental problems. The technologies that we need for most things are there. It's really the political will that we're missing. If humans were willing to do anything to protect the planet, what would be the five most impactful things we could do? What are the five most impactful things we can do to protect the planet? Um, I think as individuals, the most important action people can take is get politically active so that you can turn your desire for change into, into broader social change. So get out there and vote, pick an issue that's important, whether to you that's um, climate change or land use, forests, water, um, get active on it and, and see what kind of political changes you can make. Uh, for a government to, to make quick change to address climate change, um, it, we need to, to stop having um, massive pollution of the atmosphere be free for corporations. Uh, it doesn't make sense to treat the atmosphere like a, a massive sewer and to be dumping um, billions of tons of carbon dioxide into it uh, regularly. So in order to, to solve that problem, uh, we're looking at putting a price on carbon. Um, that could be a, a carbon fee. It could be revenue neutral, revenue neutral so that um, as the price of carbon, the price of energy, fossil energy goes up, um, there could be a reduction in income taxes or taxes on labor or a dividend to the people. Um, that tends to be pretty popular and it makes, it makes most people, in looking at the United States for instance, it makes most people better off. Um, or you can take some of that money from a carbon tax and use it to help promote um, green infrastructure or do some kind of hybrid problem. If you want to put this uh, carbon tax in a simple way, you could say tax what you burn, not what you earn. Um, so that would be a, a very quick way to send a signal to businesses if you have a steadily increasing tax on carbon. Um, they'll be able to factor that into their, their planning and and it's not, it's not an imaginary tax. There are costs associated to burning carbon. Right now, society at large is paying them. Um, they we're paying for the, the, pri the price of carbon pollution in, in climate change, in air pollution, asthma in children, um, crop, crop failures. Um, so these costs are real. They're just not being paid by the right people. So that would be a main thing to do uh, to help the planet. Um, we could all lighten our footprints by eating lower on the food chain, um, eating, eating less meat, milk, and eggs, um, looking where your food is coming from, um, buying local where possible. And overall, for, for most people, we can consume a lot less of everything. Uh, we can ask, you know, what do we need in life? Do we need a new car or do we need mobility? There's other ways to provide mobility than individual automobiles. Do we need to um, have consumption be a national pastime? You know, it doesn't make sense. We, I think going back and reevaluating what we really need um, as opposed to what we want or what society and advertising tells us we want um, can be incredibly powerful for uh, individuals to do and really create a, a mind shift. We, uh, to figure out what's important in life. What's important in life are our family and our communities. It's stuff, stuff doesn't make us happy. You're the second person I've had in this chair in the last 24 hours who mentioned the thought of a carbon tax. Has the government been, been talking about this? Is this on the table for, for discussion? Or is this something that a few brilliant minds have sitting here with me have conceived of but nobody's talking about yet? Uh, people do talk about a carbon tax. It's been um, 
put forth before Congress and um, if you talk to Congress people, they'll say tax is a dirty word. So, okay, so let's call it a carbon fee. Um, and many policymakers agree that it's, it's a smart move, that it makes sense to, we have a climate problem, we need to solve it. Um, letting the market help guide people's decision makings, it tends to be a very powerful tool. It's just, it's tough for a politician to say, okay, we're going to impose a new tax on anything. Um, and so that's why uh, a number of researchers have put forth this idea of tax shifting. So to uh, move what you're, to tax um, energy use, fossil energy use, tax carbon emissions, things that create carbon emissions, um, while pairing that with a re reduction on, say, uh, income tax um, as a way to make it more palatable for, for people. Instead of taxing what you earn, taxing what you burn, actually sort of still tax what you earn, but maybe at a different level because we're going to start taxing what you burn and com uh, having a better combination of the two that ultimately will reduce the carbon footprint. Well, as it, as it becomes more expensive, to, to use energy. I think that's when we'll see automakers go back to uh, creating more and more fuel efficient cars or moving over to electric vehicles um, and then have that source of electricity be fossil fuel free. Um, and it is, it's, it's an exciting time to think about that just because the costs of alternatives to coal and oil um, have the costs have become much more affordable and in many cases you know if you want to drive a car on electricity instead of gasoline you're looking at like 80 cents per gallon equivalent um, so the economics are actually there um, and there's a number of studies that look at for um, if a consumer were to buy um, a solar panel a battery storage and an electric vehicle um, and they're they're charging that electric vehicle with that solar solar energy, it could have a payback in as little as eight years um, because after you after you've you've paid it back, you're basically getting your, your energy for free. I, I guess I would add something on that Please. too. Um, there's a, a group around the country called the Citizens Climate Lobby that has been one of the um, largest forces pushing for this carbon um, carbon tax. They, they, their proposal is carbon tax and dividend. So tax, tax what you what you burn, but then redistribute that money to, to people around the country. And they've run a number of economic models that show that almost all Americans will be better off financially. They'll end up with more money in their pockets, even if they keep all the rest of their habits the same. Um, because it's it's a small handful of people that are using <laughs> far more energy um, th than the rest of us. So um, if people want to get involved, I think they could look at the Citizens Climate Lobby. There's chapters in every state and they're helping to push forward um, this with policymakers and, and their numbers have grown um, uh, exponentially in the last few years of people getting interested in this. And I think um, some policymakers are starting to listen. We also have a uh, they're behind the Congressional Climate Lobby, which is in the House of Representatives, getting bipartisan um, membership of, of policymakers that, that think we need to do something to address carbon. And there's equal numbers of Democrats and Republicans involved with this.